Hello YouTube, it's Captain Naps here with you once again. It's been a little while since I've had a chance to post a video, so uh, I, I do apologize. It's been uh, a busy time, uh, and uh, I have been uh, pretty hard at work the last uh, month or so. Uh, and unfortunately, one other thing that has now un hindered my uh, ability to uh, post videos is the fact that I've been playing with my new toy, uh, which is the one you can see right here in front of you. That's right, uh, I picked up the Fly the Mad Dog X uh, from Leonardo Software, the MD-82, and I've got to say, this is a fantastic airplane. This is one of the best airplanes I've uh, picked up. I like it. I, I like it as much as the Dash 8 so far. Um, it's so uh, this is definitely a very good systems study level airplane. You cannot uh, deal with this aircraft if you uh, haven't read the manual. That's one thing I learned very quickly. So uh, it's absolutely a phenomenal airplane to look at. Uh, it's uh, the, the 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 outside model is absolutely uh, phenomenal. Uh, you know, right from the silver uh, polished uh, American Airlines paint scheme here to individual things. If I start to zoom in and you start to see the detail on this model, the rivet lines, the individual uh, decals on the windows. Uh, one thing I love about the models that they've actually done here, Leonardo here, is chipping paint. As silly as that is, but like if you look uh, in various uh, areas, like on the wing, at the seams and whatnot, you see chipping paint, you see accent panels, like look at the, the landing gear. Uh, just from the outside alone, this is a phenomenal looking airplane. And then you get inside and you try and fly it. And you realize that if you have not read the manual, you are lost. This is actually, calling this my first impressions video is a bit of a misnomer, unfortunately. It is actually, this is uh, probably about my fifth or sixth time actually flying this airplane. So it's not totally my first impression of this airplane. Uh, my first impression of this airplane was wow, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to figure it out. <laughs> I think for my first two impressions. And I've gotten it figured out, and I'm glad. Like, uh, at the first time I powered it up, it took me over two hours to get the airplane to the point where I can start the engine. It, it, the, the detail is, is there, and, and testing all of the various systems and everything is just uh, absolutely, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's very realistic, very detailed, and very laborious. It's a very manual airplane. There's not a lot of, there is automation to it, but there's a lot of things you have to do manually. So, uh, but I've really enjoyed this. I, I, I invite you to come with me today as we uh, do a, uh, a fl simulated flight here uh, online on the VATSIM network. We're going to be flying today from uh, Philadelphia, KPHL Philadelphia in the United States here up to uh, Toronto, Canada, one of my favorite airports. This is the Sun Skyjet uh, Freeware P3D scenery. This is freeware scenery. This is some of the most phenomenal freeware scenery I've ever seen. Uh, it's not perfect. The jetways don't work. And I'm okay with that, with given given the uh, otherwise huge level of detail here. But uh, what a great uh, airport. So I thought I'd uh, give this a try. There's some ATC online today. So without further ado, I'm going to get this whole thing started. I'm going to try and explain a little bit as I go. It's probably going to go pretty fast because uh, I want to cover, I want to get this flight underway. And uh, if I really do take the time to explain everything, it literally can take, uh, you know, it could literally take me two hours just to get this airplane started. So uh, I'm going to pop up here what is one of the most handy things that they have here. Uh, I'm actually going to move it off screen just so it's not too much of a distraction. But what this is here is this is a, a view manager for those of us that don't have uh, Chase Plane or anything, any other good view programs. It basically lets us move around the whole flight deck, overhead panels, uh, captain's first officer's view, uh, MCDU panels, center pedestal. You're going to see me using this a lot. Uh, this airplane, there's so many switches you have to to. Uh, excuse me. There's so many switches you have to uh, uh, you have to throw in this airplane and things you're watching that you uh, that this view manager is essential. So I'm actually just moving it just off screen so that it doesn't distract too much. But I am going to use it continually. So I apologize for the hard pans, uh, and I'll try to get you used to it. Uh, let me just start off here, just in this flight deck view here from the captain's side, and uh, just show you what uh, what is what is in this airplane here. So uh, we do have. Sorry about that horrible panning here, but we do have uh, two overhead panels, kind of the more rear overhead panel, which is mostly maintenance, uh, some fire protection, circuit breaks, etc., and then the main overhead panel, which controls most of the systems of the aircraft, and uh, we've also got our enunciator panel here at the front of the uh, overhead panel, and then of course we've got your pretty standard glare shield panel, flight instrument panel, engines in the middle, uh, we've got uh, audio panel for the captains over here, along with controls for the uh, PFD and ND displays, parking brake. Um, on the middle of the uh, tiller there, and then of course we do have the MCDUs for the uh, FMS, which is a pretty good functional FMS, very similar to the uh, Boeing style FMS. Uh, so obviously the center pedestal, and then we've got the rear pedestal here, um, 
has radios and uh, trims and a few other things as well. So I, I, just in order to get this done in a reasonable amount of time, I find it easier for me to bounce around like this from one view to the next. So I, I hope you can follow along with me as I'm doing it. I'm not trying to be disorienting, but the, uh, this is the easiest way sometimes to get to this, reach the switch you need to do uh, to operate. So uh, without further ado, this is a cold and dark start. We're going to get start powering it up right here in the middle of the overhead flight deck is the battery switch. You switch it to on, but then you also have to click it one more time to lock it in place. It goes to, ver it goes to horizontal here. That locks the battery switch in place. Uh, and then we just go through, first of all, a couple of cockpit safety inspection items while the battery is just sort of getting itself all warmed up here. Running off batteries only until we get the external power connected, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, windshield wipers off. On the, pet on the center column here we have uh, landing gear is down, and uh, uh, auxiliary high pump switch. Uh, here we go, best to see it from here. So auxiliary high pump switch is way down here, it is off, and uh, flap slats are up. So the uh, speed brake lever is retracted, and then we go back to the overhead panel just to check the circuit breakers. All these circuit breakers on this airplane apparently work. I haven't played with them too much. If systems start failing, I will have to start playing with them, but uh, they all apparently work quite well. So uh, the, these ones all up here actually do cut power to whatever circuit you want. So very much a systems level airplane. I'm really liking this airplane though. Uh, so that's quickly. That was the uh, cockpit safety inspection. Now, a quick preliminary cockpit uh, setup here. First thing we're going to do is get external power put on. Once you have battery power, you can use the maintenance interphone. This is a neat little feature. Right-click on the call button, and it brings up the menu of things yes, you sir. can do: uh, ground power, air starter, air conditioning. I'm just going to go with ground Connect power. Connect the GPU, please. Stand by. And in a couple seconds, you'll see it come on. Up at the top are the ground services buses. Those are really just for uh, just for ground services if you're grooming the cabin and whatnot. But uh, really, the ones you want are on the main control GPU panel here. Connected. There it is, external power, and we can connect it to the left <laughs> and the right bus. Autopilot. And that turns on the lights Autopilot. and uh, starts the whole airplane powering up. Uh, Basically, from there, we move on to a quick passenger address check. And before we do that, what I'm going to do is turn the lights on right here in the middle. Tenant call button. Again, right click, and it brings up some things we can do. PA emergency light PA test. And emergency light test. So this is me making the PA. In a second, I get the call. Emergency lights okay. And the emergency lights are okay. They were on. They checked out. Now I can return the emergency lights to the orange position that they would normally be in. Perfect. Uh, right now it's daytime. I'm gonna this is kind of a dusk flight. By the end of this flight, hopefully it'll be dark, and you'll get to see how nice this flight deck looks in the dark as well. Um, so uh, we don't need to turn on any interior lights, but we are gonna test all the enunciators here. Uh, so you can see all the enunciators here on this panel. Everything, nothing's blanked out. Everything's on. All these enunciators are on. There's not a whole lot of enunciators on the on the upper panels. Really, just uh, uh, the uh, fire to discharge uh, lights are the only other ones that come on on the main panels where you see a lot of the lights tested. So everything on the glare shields, the caution warning lights, everything comes on, all numbers are eights. Um, GPWS lights, engine fire lights, uh, FMA panels, uh, TCAS panels, and uh, all your engine dis electronic engine displays as well. Everything should all be eights, showing all their segments and spinning and everything. So uh, once you're happy with that, that all the lights are working. This is just like uh, a lot of the other aircraft where you can push and drag away and uh, then the light, uh, the button remains pushed until you come back and click it again. Uh, other than that, just quickly for the preliminary cockpit preparation, down here on the pedestal is actually the uh, control for the pressurization system. I just put it into manual mode. This actually controls the outflow valve, and this is the outflow valve uh, indicator closing here. When I put it back into automatic mode, it's going to automatically reopen that uh, valve all the way. And the last thing we have to do as part of the preliminary setup is just test the rudder and aileron trims. And uh, just move them a little bit one side to the other. And then the one thing you should do when you're ready to recenter them is actually put the, oops, yeah, the aux pump back to override. That'll give some pressure to the system and uh, help make sure that the controls are centering properly. I'm basically going, I don't know anything about this airplane. I'll say that right now going into this. I don't know anything about this airplane. Uh, more than what I basically learned from the Leonardo manual and also another manual I found online. Uh, all the other aircraft I flew and prepared, I've known ahead of time. This is the first one where I am learning this airplane in prepared. There's a lot to learn. It's a lot of fun, but there's a lot to learn. So uh, I'm still kind of going through my man through my uh, <laughs> through my notes as I do this. So please bear with me. I'm trying to make this as good as possible. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to follow the flows Leonardo set up uh, in their manuals. They set up some flows. I find their manuals are a little bit, we'll talk about their manuals later, but I find them a little bit weak. They're there, they're good, they're a good starting point, but they're not quite complete. So 
Uh, park and Brake, I believe, is already on, and uh, I can always check the status of that because it'll tell me on the overhead panel. If I, I thought I'd turn it on, but then I also I had a little problem here with my with my sim and ended up resetting, and I don't think I've turned it on since I restarted the sim, have I? Nope, because I should have a message on one of those tell me that it's on. So let's go ahead and turn the parking brake on, pull it up. Yes. I just don't want to cycle it too many times because there's only a limited amount of, uh, of charges in the uh, hydraulic accumulator. Now the master caution light came on. We should have an indication here that parking brakes are on. Perfect. All right. Um, moving right along here. Uh, let's see. So while we, st we start moving up the glare shield, make sure that uh, these are the landing and uh, taxi lights. Make sure they're all off and uh, test a few things here. Now, one thing you've got to do when you start up is turn up the brightness on your PFD, or your ADI, I guess it's called this aircraft, and your ND. Uh, same thing on the FO side, you'll need to come over here. He's got a control panel as well. Turn up the brightness so you can actually see what they, what they say. And uh, when I turn the flight director on, I do get centered pink needles on that side. And it also turns on the FMA. Uh, what you're supposed to do at the start of the day is do an auto lend test and uh, let's see if I can do this here. I'm also going to turn on the flight directors, uh, uh, flight, the F first officer's flight director so that we can see both sides, make sure the, uh, oh, you know what, I, I, sometimes I forget this, you have to actually tune in a, a localizer frequency for this auto land test to run, so 109.3 I'm pretty sure will suffice. There we go, auto land pre-flight test, and what you're going to see is you're going to see it indicates left and up and down and right. It does a whole bunch of tests. It flashes no auto land for a while while it's doing the test. This takes like 45 seconds. One of the tests we're supposed to do in the glare shield while that test is running itself. It's supposed to be able to put the autopilot on and just make sure my quick release autopilot. will disconnect it. And uh, pressing it a second time silences the alarm. So there you go. That's tested. Uh, flight instruments. We can check while this auto land uh, auto landing system is still in the pre-flight test mode here. Uh, we should have about 340 knots for the uh, barber pole here, zero speed, 0.15 Mach indicated, and uh, ADI is still going through its test here. I think it's almost done its auto land test here. Uh, cage the standby gyro here. Pull it upright. There we go. The test is done. No uh, flag remains, so the test is passed successfully. Uh, there's also an individual test for the PFD here. There it goes. DFD is uh, testing itself. Um, other than that, make sure the altimeters, no flags. Basically, everything here should not have any flags, other than like a glide slope flag is fine, uh, because we don't actually have a real localizer tuned in. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, go through, make sure the clock is set. Uh, I'm going to switch to the captain's view at this point. Clock is set, no flags on any anything here. Glide slope flag is okay. Uh, we, like I said, we don't have anything tuned in. Uh, static air source is normal. That's all good. And uh, then we'll just test the captain's uh, use of the stabilizer trim here. So I'm just testing the stabilizer trim indicator here. That sound that you hear, you're going to hear it a lot in this airplane if you fly this airplane. Anytime the stabilizer is moving, so that that was this is the backup system. Anytime that stabilizer is moving. Uh, Every, every couple of degrees, I forget what it is, but every so many movements, it, it, it gives a buzz so that everyone's aware it's moving. So you're going to get very used to hearing that in this airplane whenever things are happening. Uh, turn that up to at least a little bit. There we go. And make sure that the uh, stabilizer uh, normal switch is in the normal position. And that's basically it for the uh, captain's flow. And then the FO starts the whole flow, making sure the service buses are off. Uh, tests, we can do the ground test on the flight recorder. We do that, and the flight recorder off message should go away. I believe it's under one of these here. I believe it's under miscellaneous. And it's not there anymore, so... Uh, we put that back to normal. It should We should have flight recorder off message again until we get um, until we get the uh, engines started and the parking brake released. Guard that switch again. Uh, test the cargo detection and suppression system. Make sure you hold it for a couple seconds. If you release it too quick, you're going to fail on a couple of these. And uh, we have uh, fire loops for both the uh, APU and the engines. Make sure they're generally on both. Unless a fire loop has failed, you want both loops to detect a fire. And then we start coming down to the main parts of the panel here. So right across the top of the, uh, the main panel here, you'll see a bunch of uh, instrument selection switches. So you can select everything to uh, various sources. You can have both... Uh, 
uh, air data computers, normally we have two sets of everything, and everything runs, Captain's first officer side runs on each one, but we can switch it so that uh, both sides will run on the same computer if something fails. But normally everything should be 12 o'clock, so that uh, if, if nothing's failed. Coming through the overhead panel, we just basically kind of start doing a flow down the left side of the panel here. We can test our uh, constant speed drive temperature gauges, make sure there's a rise indicated so the gauges are working, make sure our uh, switches are norm. Uh, supposed to recycle the generator switches each time you sit in the airplane just to make sure they will come online properly. APU generator should be normal so it just comes on automatically. Galley power should be off initially. Our external power is obviously on, powering both sides here. Uh, our AC bus tie should be in the auto position, DC bus tie is open, and uh, we should also be checking our external power here to make sure that uh, it's good. So we've got uh, looks like about 120 volts there, just over 400 hertz, perfect, uh, and uh, loads looking good. Uh, APU control panel here, we're not going to test it yet, but we will fire at the APU for the start a little later on. Emergency lights, we turn them on, we should get that power light on with the emergency buses illuminated. We should uh, get no warning flags down here that says the buses are offline. And uh, we should also just check to make sure that the uh, captain's instruments are all still online with the emergency power on. Once we turn it, uh, and then we can check as well the battery load. So when the emergency power is on, we're running off the battery. So we're discharging the battery a little bit. As soon as I turn emergency power off, it goes back to charging the battery and very quickly centers again once the battery is charged. Perfect. All these APU switches should basically be up if they're not being used. Uh, start pump off. Fuel heaters all off, engine ignition for now is off, and uh, starters are all off, all the fuel tanks are off, and what we should be doing as well when we have AC power is test through the pumps to make sure they come on. So uh, where do we have left and right to inlet fuel pressure low? When I turn on a left pump, yeah, that, that uh, caution should go away. Other left pump, that caution should go away. Right pump, I should get the other one to go away. Right inlet pressure go down, right inlet pressure go down, and I'm just going to leave that one on for a second, go down to the pedestal, open the fuel cross feed valve, and what you'll see is now, even though only the right pump is running, both the left and the right fuel pressures are gone. Close the cross feed valve and come back up here, and we should see the left inlet goes back to fuel pressure low, turn this one off, both are low. With the center pumps, they will pump to both sides, so you should see after a moment here, both uh, fuel inlet pressure low should go away, although I think I don't actually have any fuel in the center tank today. No, I have no fuel in the center tank, so I can't actually test those pumps, which is fine because we're not going to use them because we have no fuel. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the fuel. Uh, emergency lights we already tested and armed. We're going to get the uh, no smoking seatbelt signs on. Uh, test the pitot heat on the ground. And so basically, this ammeter shows whichever one you're pointed at. As long as you're not in the off position, all the pitot and static heaters are all on. Uh, and this selector just lets you see how many, how much amperage each one's drawing. The only one that should draw no amperage is the rat probe at the end here. But everything else is drawing amperage, so when it's on, they're all working, but we turn it back off until it's time to actually go. Um, airfoil and anti-ice, uh, the only thing we need to make sure is that the windshield anti-ice is always on, so the windshield is always heated. It takes a while to heat up, apparently, in this aircraft. All right, moving right along. Lots of stuff to talk about this airplane. The tests take forever. Engine sync is off. GPWS test. Uh, nope, test is not, uh... Light slow. There we go, got the test. Pull and up. you see the, the warning flags over as well down here. Train. The train warning. Pull up. Pull up, and that's it. So that's tested successfully. Uh, test the Vinci warning system. Headwind, a lot of tests. Fear. Headwind, fear. Headwind, fear. Uh, I don't need any cabin Tailwind, lighting right now. Fear. Tailwind, fear. Tailwind, fear. All right, anti-skid test. If I scroll down here, so you'll see that the anti-skid, once it's on, it has no uh, enunciators. When I test it, all the enunciators should come on. Four enunciators for anti-skid should come back on. Stop the test. Two stall systems to test. There's one stall Dull. system. Switch to this view, and you Dull. can see stall indicators for both sides. Dull. Test Dull. system two. You should see the same Dull. exact thing. But oops, looks like I let go of it. I heard it running. Dull. And there you can see both are eliminated the stall again. Uh, overspeed warning test. Overspeed. Thank you. Uh, yaw damper should be. Overspeed. Okay, thank you. Over. Uh, yaw damper should normally be on. Uh, mock tremor should be normal. Uh, ice fod test again. You should get. Oops. Hold it down. You should see four alerts come up here. Perfect. Release the test. Uh, to test the uh, air conditioning system. Right now we don't have any air flowing, but we can test. Uh, 
make sure the valves will move. So as I move it towards hot, it moves towards hot. As I move towards cold, the valve does move in manual mode. Normally we leave it in auto anyways. Same thing for the uh, right pack. Check and make sure it does move. And uh, we can check the cabin temperature. I'm going to get a complaint very shortly from the uh, cabin crew here about the temperature. <laughs> they do complain very quickly. Uh, radio rack is in fan. And uh, yeah, so the cabin's 10 degrees. I'm surprised they haven't uh, called me yet. Alright, so uh, in order to reset this, usually when you get bus transfers, the cabin pressurization system faults. It switches to the standby, so we just switch it to standby and back to primary. It works. Transfer lockout button, we can push that to reset it when we're on the ground when we get this fault initially. Usually we get that fault during power up. It's nothing much we can do about it. Let's see if I can get some backlighting there. There we go. Even though it's daytime, a little bit of lighting goes a long way. We're going to Toronto, altitude of about uh, 500 feet here. A little bit too fast on the mouse wheel, and then it just sort of shoots through to the next setting there. There we go. I'll set the altimeter as we get close to Toronto. Uh, air conditioning shut off, so an auto. Ram here is set. Wipers are off. Lens here has been checked. And I think while we're up here at this panel, I think we're going to fire up the APU just to get the warming air going in the cabin because uh, it's not going to be happy. So things you figure out, you can't start the APU without fuel running it's from the right tank. So we usually generally start the uh, right uh, rear pump, half pump. And then we can just go ahead and start the APU. You'll see the warning message come on. APU starter is on down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it's on. And uh, in a couple seconds, you'll see the gauges. There's the starter turning the APU. You'll see the EGT come up momentarily. Without one of these fuel pumps running, either the right aft pump or the start pump, you can't get the APU to run. So you need fuel pressure from the uh, from the tanks. That looks like it's going to be a pretty good start there. There we go. APU generator's online. We can switch both of our buses to the APU generator and switch off the ground power at this point if we wanted to. Uh, what we can do is turn on the air. And it's locked out, I believe, for one minute anyways. But I am going to turn on the cabin pressure supplies. And once the ducts open after about a minute, allowing the minute for the APU to stabilize, then uh, we'll see the temperature start to warm up here. I'm just going to go back up here really quickly and tell our mechanics to disconnect. Yes, sir. You're cleared power. to disconnect. Thanks. Because uh, we just don't need it anymore. All right. And uh, that's pretty much it for the overhead panel. Still flipping through my notes as I do this because it's just such a complicated airplane, but I, I'm loving it. I really am. Uh, all right. Glare shield now for the FO's flow. So we start over here. Master caution from all the tests we've been doing. It's fine. Uh, we should have the position lights on right off the bat. Here's the rest of the lights. We don't really need them so badly right now. Uh, the FO does a couple of uh, uh, sets a couple of things here. Now again, as uh, as I always do, I'm using uh, Simbrief for my flight plan. So I'm just going to go quickly to my Simbrief flight plan here. And uh, where is it? Uh, just to check my cruise speed here. So my cruise speed we're planned at Mach 76 today in cruise. So I'm going to go ahead and set. Uh, already my Mach uh, 76. I'm going to leave the uh, indicated airspeed until I figure out what my V2 is. And this airplane does it all very nicely for you, so uh, we'll figure it out in a moment here. Uh, make sure the heading, the bank selector, is in 15 degrees initially. That's the best place to keep it. And uh, altitude alert uh, test. So what we basically do, we're at about a, what are we indicating here? We're indicating negative uh, Okay, it's hard to see from this perspective. We're indicating negative, uh, negative 600 feet anyway. So we'll set the altitude alerter to about a thousand feet here, and then what we do is use the altimeter to actually just start climbing towards it. When you get to within 750, you see the alert light come on. You hear the tone. As you get a little closer, it'll actually lock in. You turn to see the light go out. And then when you go start going back down again, you get below 250 feet, you get the altitude alert. That's what you're looking for. Altitude. And to, to make that test stop, you simply adjust the altitude one more time, and that will reset the altitude alerting circuitry. Uh, make sure the flight director switches on on this side, and we're all good to go. Uh, move to the center panel here, and try and do it from here. Start with uh, make sure the valves are in, and do the fire test. So there's two fire loop test buttons. You have to push and hold them both. So I'm now pushing and holding fire them both. You can engine. hear the fire test. You can see the handles fire light up. You get master right caution engine. and master warning. Uh, if you fire engine. for the master warning, get the caution on here for fire detector fire loop, right and if you go right up to the very top, you see all the loop fire detectors light engine. up. And once you've seen that, fire that's good, right and release the test switches. 
Uh, let's see, where else am I here? Uh, reverse thrust lights, make sure they're not on, obviously. Engine indicators, check everything, looks pretty normal. The engines aren't running, the temperatures look very normal for sitting here cold and idle. Fuel used readouts, we reset those just to make sure that they are, uh, uh, that we can use them to judge what we're doing here. Uh, engine oil indicators, so everything's here on this panel here. I wonder if I can see it a little better from this one a little bit if I zoom in. Uh, oil quantity indicators, lots of oil in the tanks, lots of hydraulic quantity in there. Uh, no hydraulic pressure right now, but that's fine. Uh, TRC thrust rating uh, setting here. We uh, just do a quick test. We should see 2.04, we should see 12 degrees, and the no mode light should go out. Once we release the test button, no mode comes back because we haven't selected anything for takeoff yet. <sighs> so much to do here. <laughs> Fuel quantity. Test the two systems. They should indicate 3,000 in all the tanks, total 9,000. That looks about right. And, uh, move over, test the uh, gear horn, pull on the gear without moving it up, you'll get landing the landing gear, gear warning, you'll see the lights all turn red, landing release gear. it, it goes back in, it's good. Um, uh, let's see here. True air speed and static air temperature, I don't know why it says 130, it shouldn't really say 130 sitting here on the ground, so I'm not sure why it says that. Static air temperature 2 degrees I think is pretty accurate from what I recall. Uh, again, the airspeed indicator on this side looks the same. Basically, check the FO's instruments and make sure they all look uh, look the same as the captain's. We can test the PFD ND, make sure they look good. Uh, we'll have to set the altimeter in a minute once we grab the weather. Clock looks good. Um, navigation display, VSI, all look good. Uh, one thing that's hiding down here is the hydraulic panel. I'm just going to remove the control column for a second to test the hydraulic panel. So what you're going to see here uh, is first you turn on, uh, you won't see anything with the engine pumps, but you turn on the aux pump, and you'll see the number two system pressurizes pretty quickly, and then when you turn the transfer on, then you should see it pressurize the left system pretty quickly. Back off again, and you should see them start to drop off. Make sure the actual engine pumps are set to high for the start, and we're good to go. Down here we've got the brake temp indicator, Press the test button, you should get the alarm, and you should see the needle go up. And uh, make sure the static air source is normal for the FO. Primary stabilizer trim, we've already checked it from the captain's side, so keep going. Uh, weather radar, it does work in this aircraft. Uh, one nice thing, a nice neat feature that you can have in this aircraft, is uh, rather than having to reach over to the side to, to hit your mode buttons for your navigation display, if you right click on your navigation display, you can get through the various uh, modes. And likewise, if you just have the mouse hovering over it, and you move the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. I can then reach over here, power up the weather radar, hit test, and you'll see the test pattern come up nicely on here just to show you the weather radar does work. It's integrated with Active Sky if you so choose, and uh, it should display whatever Active Sky is showing you. So I haven't tested it with thunderstorms yet. It'll be uh, as the summer starts to grow on us, I think uh, I will test eventually. Uh, rudder hydraulic control lever should actually be in power mode, and. Uh, Takeoff warning thrust levers, so we just advance the thrust levers here, and we should start hearing takeoff Flat. warnings. Flat. Stabilizer. Brake. So you'll hear the uh, you'll hear all four warnings. You should hear all four warnings. I'm just remembering very quickly here that I have to uh, reset my controls for. Yeah, so the uh, takeoff warnings checked. The fuel cross feed valves closed. Takeoff selector is right now set to the dial of flap is set to so. Uh, ATC, we can run a test on the transponder, and uh, you should see the test pattern on the TCAS on both sides. And uh, ADF, we're not going to worry too much about testing. And that's basically all the pre-flight testing of this aircraft complete. <sighs> wow, that took like 20 minutes already, 25 minutes just to get to that point. Now I think we can finally start looking at actually programming this flight. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the ATIS uh, from uh, from uh, my VAT, uh, V-Pilot here. And it uh, looks like it's Information Juliet, uh, clear sky, 2 degrees, 3010 on the meter. So I'll set that on all my altimeters while I'm thinking about it here. We're pretty close to sea level in Philly, so that uh, sounds about right. 30... It's getting dark just as we're sitting here. And I got to just... Uh, just had to stop the altitude warnings, and I believe the FO side should be linked to mine. I hope. Uh, yes, that's, I did set that setting in the uh, in the load manager, and it uh, looks like ILS is runway nine, departing nine left, thirty-five and eight. Uh, read back all hold shorts. 
All right, and uh, I think I'm going to give uh, Philly Approach a call and see about getting us a clearance. So uh, down here, 28.4. Get myself a piece of paper to write on. And uh, Philly Approach, good evening. It's uh, American 782 IFR Toronto. Uh, let's see here. Uh, while we're waiting for that, let's set up the FMS based on what we're expecting, more or less, here. Uh, so, of course, we initialize the position, first of all. Go to the route. Uh, program it in. So we are, let's see here, we're KPHL today. And uh, we're going to CYYZ. Uh, for those of you watching, this probably looks a lot like the Boeing uh, FMS. I'm, I'm sure you're probably thinking that as you're watching it. That's exactly what the Boeing FMS looks like. Uh, Pottstown, and then I believe it's uh, Sarah, Ravine, and uh, Phillipsburg. So, uh, S. Sarah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like I may have called uh, Philly on his thing not working, so he's going to try to reconnect, see if he can get it to work. No big deal, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be uh, a pain in the butt. <laughs> uh, ravine, let's see here, uh, north 40, west 76, sounds right. Uh, Phillipsburg, and then uh, Wozy, and I can program in the departure for Billy, I guess, departing off of, uh, what was it, uh, we had nine left, I expect, for departures, so, uh, departures from Philly, nine left, Philly two, that's it, uh, perfect, it's in there, and then, uh, arrival, and Philly approach from, uh, American 782, I still see the receive light going on, I apologize, I still, uh, I'm still not hearing anything. I don't know why I'm apologizing. It's the Canadian in me. <laughs> All right. Uh, what runway are we expecting in Toronto? Um, just do a quick little. It doesn't really matter that much because I can always change it fairly easily. But uh, expecting 15 left. I'm going to go with uh, whatever. Uh, we'll go with uh, 6 left. So Ling 8, 6 left. Fire Wozy. ILS 6 left. Lippy transition. And that should all be in there then. And uh, we can go to the legs page if you want to see it. We can uh, American 782, how do you hear? American 782, read you 5 by 5 thank you. Alright. Let me tell you what happened. I thought I was playing my headset earlier. I was that you. I don't know there. Let's get it. Um, it's all good, quick to the uh, Toronto Airport. So that's a two departure for the this pot down in the fall. 18,500 expect, I will be 4010, departure with me, swap 3061. Okay, uh, American 782, clear to Toronto via the Philly 2 departure radar vectors Pottstown, and then the flight plan route, maintain 5,000 initially, uh, 340 10 minutes after, and 3061 on the squawk. It's getting dark here, even as I sit here trying to get this all uh, American 782, the read vector is correct, push to start your discretion, call for taxi. We've only got a left for departure for the itinerary 3012. Okay, we'll call you ready for taxi and uh, plan 9 left for departure. Thank you. All right. Uh, Delta 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 here. The center of Panthers. 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 Right over here, and we'll just get the FO's lights on because it's just getting dark. And it's, it's the panel lighting in this is nice. It's very nice. It's almost. It's, I, I really like it. Uh, Alright. I beg your pardon. One thing I can do while we're sitting here too is ask the cabin crew to start boarding because they wouldn't get a while to board. Alright, uh, sorry, back to the FMS, which we were doing. I don't know if you saw there while we were having that little discussion. I stepped through all the fixes to make sure everything looked good so we can go ahead and activate and execute. Uh, you and then we can go ahead and uh, taxi. get the rest of our information in here. So our fuel is uh, 18,000 pounds here, 17,950. Uh, I'll put 17.9, and then slash N for normal fuel consumption model. And our ZFW is planned at, uh, again, uh, this time I'm actually going to hit, uh, not uh, sim brief, but the, uh, 
load manager for um, the Mad Dog here. Loading navigation database. It's got a whole flight planner in here. I'm not going to go into it too much here, but uh, I will pull out the ZFW of 113.3. Uh, so 113.3. Everything's done in indexes of 1,000. Uh, reserve fuel. Uh, again, go to the Simbri flight plan quickly. Add this up. 33.6 plus 2.8. Uh, 5.6, uh, 6.4. A little bit of mental math there, 6.4, done. Cruise altitude today is planned at 3.40, and uh, cruise wind, again, going to flight plan, plan uh, for sim brief, 3.07 at 63. And ice a deviation of minus 2 today, and our index I, I, uh, page is done. The last thing we need to do is our takeoff information. This is quite easy to do today. Uh, they've done a great job here of just bringing up. This is just a window I can just bring up. Takeoff data. Use the scroll wheel to select the takeoff weight. I read. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ZFW in here as well. So the ZFW goes in here as well. 113.3. And then it'll calculate. It'll add the fuel weight and give you a gross weight readout on your fuel point. Right in front of your eyes. Right in front of your eyes. Uh, you there's 13.3. Give it a second. It'll blank out. 131, so we'll, right, we'll get 131,000 takeoff, and uh, flap 15, and I can adjust the flaps to whatever I want, we'll do that as we go, right. here's the speeds anyways, uh, so our V2 is going to be 142 Check. right now, you heard me say that. You so I'm going to go ahead and set one V2 plus 10 for our uh, initial takeoff, yeah, so I understand. some lights on this panel as well here, there we go, uh, and the other nice thing you do is once you've brought up the information on here, just click on the airspeed indicator and it will set the four bugs for you. V1, VR, uh, flap retraction, slap retraction. Just all set just by clicking on it. It's a nice shortcut I'll because I'll otherwise it could be really one. tedious to go we through this information. Uh, well, I can only imagine, yeah, setting those bugs any other My way is really awkward. Uh, same thing on the FO side. I've set you his bet. bugs as well just like that. Done. And uh, the one thing I didn't do, of course, was set it in the FMS, Zephyr. which I was going to. Uh, 130, 135, 142. 130, 135, There we go. Uh, that's about it for the performance setup. Uh, today, we're just going to do, I'm not going to do a flexing takeoff, I'm just going to do a full power takeoff. Stays on for that. Um, too much, doing too much other stuff to, to play with that too much. Uh, Philly two departure off of nine left. So I'm going to pull up my uh, jump charts here and have a quick look at the Philly two departure. But uh, it's not very complicated, anyways. It's runway heading, I believe, uh, which is off of the nines. If I got it here, one second, is uh, 087. So 087 is the departure heading, so we'll go ahead and set that right now, and then he'll probably assign us something anyways, and he said maintain 5,000. So we're going to set the 5,000 in there. Last thing we're going to make sure we do set is the transponder code, obviously, 3061. 61 in the box, and I think we're just about ready to go here. <laughs> uh, radio aid, speed readout, heading readout, altitude readout, we've got the FMS all inputted. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Make sure everything looks good. So we've got our AHARS is aligned. Everything's looking good uh, on the attitude indicator. Takeoff data form TRC art selected. V bugs set and cross checked. Altimeters uh, are set and cross checked. And uh, pre flight briefing. So uh, I'll do that in one second. And uh, we're going to put this onto. There we go. Zoom that in. I find I feel like these are a little backwards, but anyways, I'm not going to about that too much radio aids uh, and FGCP is all set so we're just going to quickly do a briefing here so uh, we're at gate alpha 6 here we're going to taxi out as instructed by ETC expecting uh, probably Juliet uh, very short taxi out to 9 left for departure uh, for the departure off 9 left on the Philly 2 departure uh, that's going to be uh, basically all runways is climb as an assigned heading by ETC and maintain 5000 it's fairly straightforward uh, engine failure will just return back here and uh, otherwise I think we're just about ready to go Sounds like my cabin crew is hopefully just about done boarding here. Don't need to tell them anything. They'll, they'll send me a load sheet when they're ready to go, and that's about it, I think. So we could do the uh, uh, 
cockpit crew checklist here. So let me just pull that out. And uh, where, there it is. Uh, so AHAR's alignment, everything is uh, checked. FMS is uh, set and cross-checked. And pre-flight complete uh, indicates that everything's been set up properly. Emergency lights are armed. Now I get a little bit more light going on up here now. It's getting dark. Cabin signs on and on. Uh, windshield anti-ice switch is on. Engine sync selector way up here at the top. Remember it is off. Uh, stall warning was tested. Air conditioning switch, shutoff switch is auto. Fire protection system was tested. Fuel quantity, uh, we've got 18,000 kilograms. We need 17,000 to do the trip, so we're ready. We got a little bit of extra, but we're uh, just where we need to be there. Um, altimeters again, 3010 cross checked. I could probably turn that floodlight up a little more in the middle there. Make that just a little bit brighter. There we go. That's probably good. There we go. There's my load sheet pops up when they're done. Uh, so takeoff index. That's the important thing. Mean aerodynamic cord 19.6 and the actual uh, ZFW. Uh, if I could find it here, zero fuel weight actual 113 314. It's exactly on target. It's the uh, uh, index 19.6. Perfect. So what we do is we come down here and we set our CG to match what they just gave us. So in this little window here, you roll this little thumb wheel around 19.6 and it calculates where your stabilizer should be based on your flap setting. We're going to do it easy. We're going to do a flap 15. Uh, you know what? We can even do a flap 11 takeoff today. So we'll, we'll make it flap 17.6. Move this one to move the flap. And while we're looking at it, we're going to also set this to our flap setting here. So and it'll set us a nice notch right there at 11. All right, listen. Uh that's about uh, uh, fuel shutoff levers are shut off. Alpha, alpha, Cabin alpha, press alpha. lever is auto. And the cockpit crew checklist is complete. So we've got uh, our final load sheet. We checked the uh, W. Looks like our speeds are all correct. Uh, our, our, uh, it hasn't changed at all, so I think we're just about ready to go here. Where are you going? Sorry, it just volume's a little bit loud, and I'm just trying to get it a little bit more reasonable. Uh, everything is set, so we're going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, the one thing actually, I guess I have to do actually is set the stabilizer trim to match it. So here's my stabilizer guide at about uh, five and a half. So I have to actually move that stabilizer back there to match it, and then we'll basically be ready for the before start checklist. And I can always check to make sure all the doors are closed. All the doors are closed. The cabin crew did close the doors when they were ready. Almost there. There we go. When those two things match, then you're in the right position for takeoff. Uh, just making sure I haven't missed anything, but I believe we've got it all. So we're just going to start go ahead. Uh, we're basically ready for start. We're just going to start uh, setting things up for the start here. So the stabilizer trim is set. We've got the power. Uh, the takeoff setting is set. APU air is on for the start, but we're going to go ahead and shut off now the uh, cabin air conditioning and divert the pressure to the uh, engine starters. Uh, fuel system, all the pumps, left and right pumps, we never start with the center tanks, we only start with the wing tanks, so the left and right uh, pumps are all on, and the anti-collision light can go on for the start, that's on the FO's glare shield, there it is, anti-collision, and uh, the other thing we've got to make sure we do is open up those pneumatic cross feed valves. Thrust levers are idle, and and we do the before from start to checklist. Like yes. Alright All right, YouTube, uh, we're just going to cut the video right there at the uh, before start checklist. We'll pick up uh, with part two. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of days I'll have it out there for you. Thank you very much for watching. I apologize if the audio is a little bit difficult to hear on this one. I used some different software. It didn't record the uh, audio in separate tracks uh, like my normal software does. And uh, unfortunately I did mix the uh, uh, background noise in a little bit louder than the voice than I normally would like. So uh, I'll try to have that fixed in future recordings. Unfortunately this whole video is already recorded. Uh, but I am going to go back to my old software, so apologize for that. Uh, if you haven't already seen it, check out my Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Captain Nabs. And uh, I've got uh, plenty of videos going on there all the time, uh, flying around in both the Dash 8 and the MD-80, just uh, a little bit more casual, a little bit more fun, but uh, please uh, please uh, follow me on Twitch if you get a chance, and uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.